So T.O., all these years, comes on the show, doesn't always agree. But the one thing I think is funny is that he annoys people because he's a Hall of Famer and he says, all right, you're not going to put me on the first ballot. I'm not going to I'm not going to go there. And that drives that drives people crazy. Part of that I like. Part of that little poking in the rib stuff. I like T.O. is now joining us live, the Hall of Famer. So people, you know, first of all, people always say, you know, T.O., you're going to get older and you're going to soften up and you're going to be just such a gentle soul when you're 60s and you're going to go, I want to go to the Hall of Fame and I want to do that. Is there even a smidge chance that as you soften as you get older, you're just going to go to the Hall of Fame and cry and say, I love you, kumbaya and all that stuff. You ever going to go there? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Um, as I've uh, said, and I think you alluded to it, um, you know, I'm my own person. Uh, I realize when it comes to the Hall of Fame and everything that it embodies, when you talk about really the, the motto, um, the criteria for guys to get in, um, 2016 was my first year up for, for the Hall of Fame, and I checked all the boxes. And so at that time, uh, you think about the, the history of the game, you think about Jerry Rice, who's the greatest receiver to ever play the game, and I'm second, you know, third, fourth, uh, you know, statistically behind him, and, and I don't get in. And as you just saw with uh, the recent Hall of Fame induction, and, and I want to clear the air because uh, I reached out to Calvin Johnson. I, I congratulated uh, him on his induction. Um, but if you think about the process and some of the guys that were on that ballot with him, uh, most notably, you think about Torrey Hope, you think about Reggie Wayne. Um, those guys are, are worthy. Uh, you think about their statistics and, and what they did, not only for their organization, but just the history of the game itself. Um, those guys are just as de deserving as Calvin Johnson, and I'm not criticizing him. I'm, this is not to, you know, uh, you know, negate his induction by any means or discredit uh, him from getting in. But if you think about the process, you know, for me, just like me, I checked all those boxes. And you think about those two guys that I mentioned, Reggie Wayne and Torrey Hope. Both of those guys had Super Bowl rings, and that's part of some of the guys that that, that vote. Uh, these players in. That's part of the criteria uh, for getting into into the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, Calvin Jackson does, Johnson doesn't have any Hall of, uh, doesn't have any Super Bowl rings. Those two guys do. So, what is the actual formula for guys to be inducted? Does it bother you because in 15 years you played, you made the playoffs more than half? Does it bother you when people say, "Hey"? T.O. was talented, but he wasn't a good teammate. He didn't help the team. You actually had huge playoff games. Is that the part that that's personal, that bothers you, that you somehow were great, but you weren't a good teammate? Well, that's the narrative that guys like yourself, Skip Bayless, and some of the uh, former football players that have gone on uh, to be a part of the media, uh, that's the narrative that has been out there for a number of years. And so uh, as it related to me and my Hall of Fame induction, I got sick and tired of people really categorizing me as, as you just mentioned, a bad teammate, uh, being selfish, being arrogant. Um, there's a number of guys that have played this game that have done far more things, uh, you know, uh, egregious or negative in a negative light than I have. But for, for whatever reason, um, that's the image that the media portrayed. Um, but you can't say that um, I don't embody uh, what people consider a great teammate. When you think about some of the teammates that I played with, um, none of my teammates have I actually supported uh, some of the media's narrative uh, that I was actually a poor teammate. When you um, – in the NFL, it's always been understood that, like, the NBA, the stars are the league. In the NFL, you never had the – even quarterbacks weren't very outspoken. You know, quarterbacks were, like, you know, part of the organization – and now you have quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers is outspoken. Deshaun Watson's like, get me out of here. Um, do, you, do, you, do you side with like a Deshaun Watson, for instance, that says this organization's awful. I'm done carrying it. You guys don't support me. I'm out of here. Do you support that? Absolutely. Uh, when you think about really where the NFL uh, stands in terms of in comparison to what Major League Baseball um, and, and the National Basketball Association, how those guys, those players uh, with those two entities, how they unify. And they basically, you know, they unify, they get together, they understand uh, their worth. And I think players are now starting to realize they have a lot of leverage. Um, if you think about the makeup of the National Football League, it's 70 plus uh, percent black and brown. And I think that's what's missing uh, is that the fact that guys are not able to really take their careers and matters into their own hands. 
Um, but as it relates to Deshaun Watson, this 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 situation, it was bound to happen. Um, there are things that has been swirling uh, around that organization, um, even from you know obviously the departure of uh, his number one receiver, De- DeAndre Hopkins. Um, you saw a guy in Andre Johnson that never gets on social media come out yeah. and basically kind of share uh, his sentiments about what's going on. You saw before the passing of their owner, the racial the the, the racial insensitive remarks that that he made. So there's something brewing down uh, that has. Been been brewing in that in that organization um, that Deshaun want Deshaun Watson wants to actually get away from. Yeah. By the way, the Andre Johnson point is well stated because Andre Johnson's one of the classiest guys. Never said anything about anybody when he comes out. Right. When when he comes out and says stuff, you got it. You got issues inside the house of the Houston Texans. Now, we had we had Darius Leonard on yesterday who is just an unbelievable football player. Went to a tiny school. <laughs> Uh, Clemson didn't want him, and South Carolina didn't want him, so he went to South Carolina State, walks into the NFL, leads the NFL in tackles as a rookie. You went, if I recall, Chattanooga, you went to a small school, and you walked into the NFL, and immediately it was like, okay, this guy is a, obviously a great player. Did We always hear about quarterbacks playing with a chip on their shoulder. T.O., did you play with a chip on your shoulder knowing, even in college, you didn't get the respect of getting like a big scholarship? Did, did you always have that chip? Uh, not at all, because I knew coming out of high school, going to UT Chattanooga, uh, I wasn't a four or five star recruit. Um, even when I got drafted, third round, 89 pick, you think about the receivers that went in that draft. Uh, I wasn't really highly touted to be, uh, you know, as talented as a number of those guys. When you think about Hussein Muhammad, uh, Eddie Kennison, uh, Keyshawn Johnson. Um, these are guys, uh, you know, uh, Mercury, Mercury Hayes, uh, Derek Mays. These are guys that played at bigger universities than I did. Honestly, bro, I, I never thought I would play beyond the collegiate level. Um, I really developed a passion for the game of football. I developed a passion to play the receiver position. Um, and I think I'm very unique in a number of ways. Um, I was just an ordinary kid that was able to kind of, like I said, develop a passion for the sport that ultimately did some extraordinary things on the football field. So um, I, I never had a chip. Um, you know, the chip, you know, the motivation that I had was when I felt like I was being uh, discredited or I felt like, you know, management or coaches or, or what have you that basically tried to strip me of my voice and really kind of just strip, uh, strip me of who uh, and the essence of who I was and, and who a lady and my grandmother raised. So I got this. I see this thing. You got a new you're partnering with the Lasorda family. Uh, Tommy, of course, passed yeah. here in the last year. You've got a wine yeah. label 81. Now, you're one of those guys. You've never even had a candy bar in your life. You're, you have, like, abs. You're going to have abs when you're 80. So I, you know, right. so do you drink? You know, wine's actually supposed to be healthy for you. You know that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, a wine, wine a day. Yeah, helps. So, so you drink your wine? I, I do. I mean, I definitely have to support, you know, the product that I'm endorsing. And honestly, I, I, you, you mentioned Mr. Tommy Lasorda, God rest his soul. Um, the week that he passed, I was supposed to fly out to uh, L.A. to do some marketing and things uh, for the wine. And he ultimately passed right before uh, before I got to L.A. And so I just really want to thank his family for honestly just giving me the blessings uh, to be able to come up with it, to be a part of this partnership and this branding of 81. And as you said, I never really drank a lot when I was in uh, when I played in the National Football League. That was part of you know uh, my health uh, reason as far as me optimizing my performance. Alcohol will dehydrate you, so I knew in order to be the best athlete that I I could be, I had to eliminate some of the alcohol. But over the last couple of years, um, I've dabbled and dabbled with wine. Um, obviously, this partnership came you know organically through uh, a mutual family friend and my marketing agent, Max Management, and so they asked me, uh, you know. What I like to partner uh, with Mr. Tommy Lasorda, and when you think about uh, a Los Angeles uh, legend, you know, obviously a Hall of Famer uh, like I am. So I Los Angeles Dodgers, them, you know, winning uh, their, their their championship last year. Uh, this was the probably the best time, the most inopportune time that I could have uh, uh, be a part of something like this. He's a pro football Hall of Famer. Here's a great trivia question, by the way. I would have never guessed this. This is a great trivia question. You can win money. T.O. is the only player in NFL history to score a touchdown against all 32 NFL teams. I wouldn't have guessed that in 100 tries. I cannot believe Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> I, I, I Seriously, I, he's played for decades. So among your other things, third most <clears throat> receiving yards in NFL history, third most receiving touchdowns in NFL history. T.O., I like having you on. You've grown up. You're good. You, you got your act together, your life together. You seem happy. You seem successful and good for you. I'm happy for you. I'm good. 
I'm good, man. I'm just like my wine. I'm aging like aging like fine wine, man. I appreciate. Are it. you a wine drinker? I Are am. You a wine yes, drinker? I. Well, well. Let me just say, I own. I'm not going to get into my. I own a couple wine stores in Connecticut. I I sell it more than I drink it, but I always appreciate it. I wine is good for the soul. Okay. Good for well, you. Yes. Absolutely. Well, you'll definitely appreciate 81. It's uh, if you have a taste for plum preserves, uh, any of uh, that likes uh, that like uh, you have a palate uh, for a ripe black cherry, spicy toasted oak. Uh, this is 81 is the wine for you. And it's a it's a cab blend. So it's 95 percent uh, cab and 5 percent Syrah. That's a good. We eat that with a steak. By the drink that with a steak right there. That rich cab Syrah stuff. Good, hearty steak. Syrah, very good stuff. You don't have to pitch me on wine ever. I know, you drink it all the time. (laughs) T.O., thank you very much for stopping by. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.